This video is sponsored by Jerry's Artorama. Jerry's Artorama Online has been serving artists for over 50 years, providing only the best quality art supplies. Jerry's Artorama has premier lines that sell all over the world and are used by millions of artists and professionals worldwide for amazing results. In addition to over 65,000 fine art supplies, choose from over 4,000 free art lessons, oil painting, drawing, acrylics, watercolors, mixed media, and the largest selection of new supplies professionally evaluated and created by artists for artists. Jerry's Artorama has been empowering artists since 1968. We provide reliability, better art supplies, great prices, and exceptional service. The quality of your art matters to us. Hello, everybody. Today, we are doing a drawing tutorial on how to draw a skeleton inside a figure. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at ArtProf, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We are going to be using this book, Artistic Anatomy. It's by Dr. Paul Roche. And this is my absolute hands down favorite anatomy book. It's really simple. I just use it for the diagrams. You can try to read it, but it's very dense. <laughs> and it just keeps things really straightforward. Anatomy is already so complicated, and I don't tend to like those really souped up anatomy books that just have, for me at least, way too much information. So we're going to get started by working from one of these reference photos. The link to those reference photos is in the YouTube video description below. And I'm gonna separate colors. So I'm going to do the human figure part with the sanguine Conte crayon. And then for the skeleton, I'm gonna use some graphite and also a charcoal pencil. All right, the way you wanna think about this exercise, it's not about making a great drawing at all. This is probably the most diagrammatic drawing exercise that I do for anatomy. I, I'm not big into charts and measurements. This is the only one where I do a little bit of that, not measuring so much, but really trying to look very carefully at all of the anatomy. And you want to treat this initial gesture should be very, very loose. As if somebody told you, you only had five minutes to work on it. Now I am really out of shape. <laughs> I haven't done figure drawing in, oh geez. I don't even know, probably just the last art prof tutorial. It's been a while. <laughs> Let me know in the chat. When's the last time you did your figure drawing? Cause uh, yeah, I, I'm not in good shape right now. And what I'm doing is trying to get the sizing. This particular exercise, you really have to fit the entire figure. That is so, so critical. If you're missing body parts, you're not really going to be able to do the exercise very well. So just make sure whatever you're doing, that you absolutely fit the figure on the page. You can see already I'm having a little trouble doing that. And don't sweat the accuracy and the proportions. It feels like you should, but what we're doing today is really imperfect. I'm going to draw a really, really wonky looking skeleton. It's not going to be accurate. But the point of this is to start to make connections. Where do you see things begin to line up? Whether you get them to line up perfectly or accurately does not matter. The fact that you begin to see some of those connections becomes very important. And remember, I will stop and take breaks, take a look at the chat. For now, I just want to get the image started. I always do this. I always make the legs too short because I was not thinking about it. I always do that. All right, so I'm gonna do some resizing. This was my first pass, but I can already tell that I've got way too much torso up here. So actually I'm gonna just draw over the arm and just 
shrink the torso a little bit. I just don't think I gave myself enough space to do the legs. So if I shrink the torso, maybe it will give me what I need to make the legs feel more substantial. Doing some squinting. I think the torso is a little bit too substantial. So I'm going to pull in the torso. Because remember, what's very important about sketching the human figure, you got to be willing to make changes. I mean, look at how many times I'm redrawing things just over and over again. <laughs> All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Oh, Slupnir, you're so much more on top of it, who says, I usually do figure drawing once a week. And Jane says, I usually prefer to draw more cartoony figures and realistic ones. I probably should practice that eventually. Not necessarily. If it's not something that is a priority to you, I don't think it's necessary. Wow, we got a lot of people here today. I'm so excited. S says, I was wondering how long do these lessons go for? When it's just me, you never know. <laughs> I've been known to go for a while because there's just a lot of stuff to go over. Usually my streams are at least an hour. It's rare that I do it less than that just because there's so much to cover. Neil is asking, how important is it to make art every day? I try doing so, but I always fail. Is it just my fault? Nope, because I don't make art every day. I don't know that I've ever done that except for art school. And that's because I had to. That doesn't mean you're a failure. It means you're a person and you have a life and you have to feed yourself. It's fine. You don't have to make art every day. Kat is asking, are you looking at your hands on the screen too or just the references when you look up? Well, I have the reference on my laptop. So that's why I'm looking up and down. But what you'll see is once I start to get this a little bit more concrete, I'm actually going to draw directly from my anatomy book. For some reason, it just feels better to have all the pages here available for me to reference. So it's up to you. I put a lot of these skeletal charts inside the reference photo link that I provided in the YouTube video description below. So if you don't have the book, you can do that. But this book is not that expensive. At least in the US, I think it's like $20 on Amazon and I use it so much. I mean, I have never stopped using this book. So if anatomy is something you really want to prioritize, get this book because it's a really worthwhile investment. All right, I'm gonna clean up my reference a little bit and then I'm gonna go right in with the skeleton, probably a lot sooner than a lot of you think I should. But I think the key to this exercise, you don't want to spend too long on the figure because if you spend too long on the figure, what ends up happening is that then there's no room to add the skeleton and you need that space. That's pretty important. Now done here, I'm already looking at the ankle bones. Here's the Achilles tendon. And also we have not gone over these because I haven't done the muscles of the leg yet. That's actually coming in December for those of you who are wondering. But these here, they're called flexion folds. And they're very handy because they show this division. And so I use those very much as a starting point. Let's just go in with the skeleton. I know it sounds crazy. It's like, Clara, you're not ready for the skeleton. I know it feels that way. But you have to be okay letting this just be like ultra loose for quite a bit of the process. All right. Now, again, it's not precise because this is a front on back view. This figure is not that. This figure is turned a little bit to the right. And so you have to keep that in mind. All right. So if I put in, let's just say very quickly vertebrae, I think what I want to search for first is actually the scapula, which is the shoulder blade, because I can see the scapula pretty well. Like right here, I can see the tip of the scapula is in there. 
And then if I look at the other scapula, it's going to be pretty foreshortened again because I'm at this angle. Okay. So you can see here the scapula were so important. Like if I just go and I start adding ribs, I'm going to be lost. And so for me in this particular pose, that's what I'm trying to aim for right now. Okay. And I think for the vertebrae, you don't need to draw every single individual vertebrae, but you want to get a sense of how they protrude. And then let's get in the pelvis. So the sacrum is like the tailbone, which is here. And then you would say, okay, the ilium, which is the upper section of the pelvis is up there. And then let's find this bone here. This is the great trochanter, it sticks out. And so I would guess on this figure, it's probably about here. And there I've got the beginnings, okay? I, I know it looks crappy, okay, trust me. You guys are not gonna get a beautiful drawing out of me today. That is not the purpose of this exercise. This is start to make those connections. And so if you're here to make a beautiful drawing, too bad. <laughs> Because I'm not going to, well, I mean, you can make a beautiful drawing. That's fine. I'm just saying I'm not going to make a beautiful drawing because this is all about looking and searching. And, and really, I just think about the drawing as, I guess, evidence of that search more so than, oh, I need to make something that looks amazing. That's not really that important. Okay. So there's my sacrum. And what I will do is after I've done a pass of pencil here, I'll go back in with the charcoal pencil on Omega so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. Let's get in a little bit more of the scapula. Okay. Because the scapula has a lot of different pieces. It's a pretty complicated bone. Okay. Now let's turn the page. We're gonna get into the arm. See what I'm saying? This is a very analytical process. This is not something which is going to be super beautiful looking. Okay, so here is my elbow, which is called the ulna. And then in the lower part of the arm, you've got the radius and you've got the ulna. So I'm gonna put in the radius, which is here and Oh, jeez, it's been a while since I've <laughs> drawn a lot of these bones. But the whole thing about the radius and the ulna, here, I'll write it down. Radius and the ulna is that they're a group. They hang out together. They're a, they're a duo. Okay. And then the thing about the hand, we get a better view of what the hand is actually doing. This hand's a little bit foreshortened, so I guess we see... A little bit of the knuckles over here. Oh, I just drew the wrist way too much in. And then there's this like cluster of bones going in there. Okay. See what a mess this is? It's going to look like this for a little while. You guys are just going to have to bear with me. <laughs> okay. Let's see what people are talking about. Seven Angelic is asking, how do you quote, make up points of view of the skeleton you can't really see firsthand? Is it practice or best guess? It's a little bit of both. So for example, let me zoom in and then you can see this a little bit better. Okay, now if you look at, for example, okay, so here, this is all symmetrical because it's straight on view of the back, okay? But in the drawing, it's not straight on, okay? So if I tried to draw the two scapula so that they looked exactly the same, that wouldn't work. I would know that this one's foreshortened a little bit and this one, you could see more of it. Also it's tilted. So I also tilted the spine. So the spine is going this way. Now in this picture, the spine just goes down straight. So it's a little bit of knowledge. It's a little bit of just making it up <laughs> as you go along. And that's fine. This is an imperfect exercise.
Justin says, how do you recommend starting to learn how to draw people and faces? I would check out our anatomy series. We have many streams that are lectures and they break down all of the bony landmarks. And actually this stream is a continuation of this other stream, which is drawing a skull inside a portrait. So actually this is a really good exercise to try out. What we're doing today is pretty complicated. This is a whole figure. And so if this intimidates you, do the skull portrait stream first and then come and do this because this is just so much more that you have to handle. Maria says, why do the body first and then the skeleton? Wouldn't it be easier to do the skeleton and then quote, fill in the meat? <laughs> I mean, you can try it any way you want. It's just that as an artist, ultimately, I would be starting with the figure. And for me, figuring out and seeing those relationships and then filling in where the bone belongs, for me, makes more sense because that's more how I would normally draw. But try it however way you want. I think that's a great question, Maria. I'm so happy that you mentioned that. So Manette is saying, I guess my problem is picking one thing at a time. I always feel like I need to do everything now. Yeah, you can't do that, Manette. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I mean, do one thing at a time. And for anybody here who's having a lot of trouble with what to do next, try our tracks. Our tracks are a sequence of video lessons and prompts. And we tell you what exercise to do, what lesson to watch. Because I know for some people, it's very overwhelming how to actually get started with that. Okay, so we did a little bit of that arm. I want to get this arm going. So this is where you have to look and find the right view of the arm. And remember, the photos are in the video description below for anybody who can't find them. I'm trying to figure out which, I guess it's this view. Yeah, I guess that's the closest view to what I have here. Okay, yeah, because I have the scapula up there. This is the humerus. That's the upper part of the bone. And I'm going to show more of the elbow than I can actually see in the chart because I can see the elbow is right here. Again, we have radius and ulna that are hanging out. And then remember, the whole thing about the hand, there's this like cluster of bones here. You don't need to know their names, but you just need to know that they're there. And then also these bones, which come out, these are the metacarpals, and then you have the phalanges, which are coming out like this. Okay. I should do a little bit more on this arm. I didn't really do a great job on that. So let me move this over here and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so if that's my scapula, you want to find this is the humerus up here at the top and i'll write in some of these names humerus can't spell that humor us okay and then there's a ball and socket joint up here and the humerus is pretty significant it's behind the scapula and that's also very important in anatomy you have to really notice what's in front and what's behind and when you start talking about muscles, you have to figure out what muscle is underneath another muscle. Those connections are what's so important. Okay, and let me add a couple of metatarsals, metacarpals, sorry. So I'll write that here. These are metacarpals. And then you also have phalanges. Okay, and this is the elbow. And then this we talked about earlier, this is the ilium. And then the edge of it is called the iliac crest, okay? And then we'll just write here, scapula. All right, so that's the upper section. Now notice I haven't even bothered with the ribs yet because honestly, they're just gonna confuse me at this stage. So I'm trying to work my way through particular bones that I think are not gonna get in the way.
S says, I like to focus on one portion of the figure and then detail it. Would doing that defeat the purpose of this lesson, even if I put a skeleton inside? I find it very hard to just do one piece of the figure and just focus on that because I think the human figure, it's all about how things connect. So how do you get from your wrist into the arm? How do you go from your knuckles into your fingers? And so the second you start isolating certain body parts, you're not seeing those connections anymore. So certainly, I mean, draw however you wanna draw, but in my opinion, if you isolate those parts, you're less likely to understand how they relate to each other, which is really important in anatomy, because if you don't see the connections, it just ends up looking like a bunch of little pieces and then you lose that whole sense of gesture. Okay, let's get in these legs. So actually, let me move drawing board up a little bit. We'll take a look at these legs from the back. Okay, so I need to find, all right, that's the lateral view. Okay, I'll put that up there. I'm trying to see what's the best way to hold this so all of you can see. Okay, there, that's better. All right, so if this is my pelvis, my great trochanter is sticking out quite a bit. So actually, I don't know that this is the best view. Let me see. Yeah, this is a better view. Okay. Because here I can really see the great trochanter. So it's more like this. All right, so this bone comes out. And then this is the femur. And the thing about the femur that is really important that a lot of people don't think of is that it crosses through the thigh. Does everybody see that? So the thigh, people think, oh, the thigh is straight up and down, right? And they think, oh, the bone must go down the middle. It doesn't. Does everybody see how it crosses over? That's really important because here you have the great trochanter, it sticks out. And then on the inside of the knee, that's why it does that diagonal. So don't make that mistake. You know, sometimes you see people, they draw a leg like this, and then they put these like marionette lines down the middle. Anatomically, that's not correct because this is what's happening is you get this diagonal that's in the femur. Okay, so there's the femur. And then my tibia is a very large bone that comes down. And then I have my ankle bones that come in. So this is the femur. And here we have tibia and the fibula. So the tibia is the big one. Like that. All right. And then the fibula sort of sits on the side. It's sort of like radius and ulna, except that the tibia is a lot bigger. And then the outside of the fibula becomes the ankle bone. Okay. So we have here lateral malleolus. And then we have over here, medial malleolus. All right. So those are my ankle bones. And then for the foot, I want to do something that's more lateral. So this is more of the view that I want. It's, it's tricky because the pose fluctuates between this and this. It's like in between this view and this view. So I'm trying to do a little bit of both. Okay. And so now I'm looking at my ankle bone. Here is my calcaneus, which is the heel. And there's a big structure of just a cluster of bones. That, that's all you really need to know. And then you have metatarsals and phalanges. Okay. I think my tibia is a little bit too wide. Let me make it a little thinner. There, that's a little bit better. All right, so that's how I got that leg. Now let's look at the other leg, which I think is more, yeah, it's pretty much this view. That left leg is like that. Okay, so let me go back here. Oh, I need to use the other, I need to flip it actually. And I do have an image of that in the Google Drive link. So if you all go in there, there is a view where I flipped the image. So I'm going to pull that up myself now so I can take a look. 
There it is. Okay. Put that aside for now and let's get in again. We also have the great trochanter, which is part of the femur. The femur is a big bone. Don't underestimate how gigantic it is. And then I'm going to put in my tibia, which is also very large. And my fibula, which is on the side, and that also becomes the ankle bone. Let's put in the calcaneus, which is the heel. And then we'll just have a little bit of those bones. Okay. So what's happening now, my drawing is like all bone, like you've sort of lost the figure in the process. But what's good about this is now that it's established, I can go back and forth between the two. So actually, let me just finish up the work on the skull. And then we'll go back, we'll do another pass on the figure, and then do another pass on the skeleton. I think the key thing is not to do them totally separately, you have to bounce back and forth between the figure drawing and the skeleton drawing. Okay, so here's a side view of the face. And really all I'm after here, so we have the vertebrae that comes into the neck. Here's the back of the skull. What I really care about is the zygomatic arch, which is your cheekbone. Here's the eye socket. The nasal bone is here. And here's my mandible, which is the jaw bone. That's really important. And honestly, that's like all you need. <laughs> like you really do not need more than that. The ear for sure. So I'm just going to write in the ear, do the nasal bone, zygomatic arch, that's the cheekbone. And then we also have the mandible. All right. So that's the very first pass is just a little bit of figure, a little bit of skeleton. And now I'm going to go back in and we're going to develop the figure a lot more. But before we do that, let me see what people were talking about in the chat. This is a hard exercise, everybody. This is like <laughs> advanced anatomy. It's, it's not simple. And I would say if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's because it is a lot. It's not easy to balance all of this knowledge. <laughs> Lisa says, drawing in your pretty book, 12 years of public schools, I'm flinching. Well, that's why I bought it because I could totally do whatever I want. It's great. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Slutnir says, the funny bone, the humorous, yes. Carmen is asking, are you drawing with a Conte crayon? Would you say using a Conte crayon is best for figure drawing or do you just prefer using it? I like Conte crayon because it's not as messy as charcoal because I know a lot of people like to use vine charcoal, it's really easy to erase. But for me, the powder just gets everywhere. And the Conte crayon, it has like the look of charcoal but it's a little bit denser. So it doesn't tend to make as much of a mess. My favorite thing to draw with for figure drawing is usually crayon. I'm not doing that here because this is fairly complicated and I wanna be able to erase. Crayons you can't erase, but it's a matter of personal taste. I mean, people have different reasons why they like certain techniques. And I would just say, try a whole bunch of techniques and see what works best for you. So Seven Angelic says, for me, I think it's the ribs that are going to get all crazy on my drawing. Well, so here's the thing, though. It's like, once you know, okay, that's about the rib cage, that's enough. Like, you, really, the only ribs that matter that much are, like, the bottom ones. The ones that are right above the pelvis, those matter because you're going to see them. But other than that, when you try to, like, draw every rib, it actually gets you into a lot of trouble. 
Jazz says, figure drawing with a live model classes are great. It trains your eye to see without your brain getting in the way. You learn to see relationships fast. Oh, I miss drawing from a live model in the classroom so much. I cannot remember the last time I got to do it, but I will say if anybody here has access to being able to draw from life, do it. it it's so, so useful. And it really is a very different experience. Because I teach online, we're limited. I, I can't use a real model during these sessions. So that's where we fill it in with the Roche anatomy book, with looking at drawings, looking at the skeleton. But that really is the icing on the cake, is being able to do it directly from life. Jane says, what amazes me is that bones literally stitch themselves back together when they get broken like magic, very slow magic. It's like Wolverine, but really slow healing, right? I mean, it's pretty much like that. <laughs> Ginger Stella is asking, how big of a piece of paper are you using? Is drawing bigger, better? This pad that I'm using here is about 18 inches by 24 inches. And I find for figure drawing, I tend to like drawing bigger. That's my personal preference, but I'm the type of person I hate drawing small. Like it just makes me feel very constricted. And so having a larger sheet of paper like this, I just feel like I have a lot of wiggle room, but it's up to you. I think the more important thing about how big you draw is that you have the experience of drawing different sizes. Because I know when I taught freshmen at RISD, a lot of them had never drawn big before. Like a lot of them would say, oh, the biggest drawing I ever made was like 16 by 12. And so I would make them do these like three foot by four foot drawings and their heads would just explode. It was like the scariest thing in the world to make such a big drawing. And so it's not that I'm saying drawing bigger is better, but the thing is that once you've done a drawing that's three foot by four foot, you're not scared of anything. And if I ask one of my RISD students, oh, could you make something this big, they go, oh, no problem. But the thing is, if you've never had the experience of drawing big, it's scary. And I want people to not feel afraid of their drawing experience. I want you to feel confident and more empowered. <laughs> George says, if we had exoskeletons, we'd have to molt regularly as we grow. Well, we have a spider here. And actually she just did her molt I think a month ago, it was the coolest thing. I just love that. Renegade says, I learned a lot from live model drawing. My teacher told us to always draw big. I have the giant newsprint pads. That's my personal preference as far as figure drawing goes. But again, it depends on the person. Okay, let's go back in with the Conte crown and start to pull out some of the particular muscular areas so we can start to make that connection. So I'm actually going to start up here at the top. And what I'm going to look for are like the skin folds because he's like really twisting his neck. And I also am seeing this is the trapezius muscle and this is the deltoid up here. Okay. Here again is the trapezius. I'll put that in. And we have anatomy streams on pretty much every single one of these areas. So you can look those up. But so look at this, okay? Th that is a muscle that's protruding. And yet if I draw the scapula, the scapula is like in there. So for example, this spot here, that's muscle, okay? So this is the skin, that's the muscle and that's the bone. And so that's how you start to understand those differences. Like in here, I'm gonna take this from the photo, which is that, this is the bony landmark of where the scapula is right there. And then if I draw in the center line and I can find his PSIS, 
which is right there. It's those two little dimples on the back. And then I'm just going to draw a couple skin folds here as well. I'm not going to bother with tone. I think that tone makes this exercise a nightmare. <laughs> so just forget about that. Just focus on the line work. And I'm going to look really carefully at how that line work functions. So for example, the crease of the backside, like that. And I'm going to look very carefully to show, okay, that's the deltoid and now this is the bicep. Okay. So what happens a lot is people look at, let's say you're drawing a neck. Okay. There's the neck and there's the deltoid. Let's say that's the arm that's coming out like that. So what happens is People look at an image like this and they just go, oh, bump in, bump out. And they, they sort of like trace the contour. But the thing is, that's not what you're looking at. What you're looking at, okay, this is the deltoid. This is the bicep. This is the brachioradialis. So these are three separate forms. We've got deltoid, bicep, brachioradialis. So you have to know what you're looking at. You have to understand, okay, what is each of these bumps? What do they actually represent? So like in here, I'm going to put in the tricep. This is where the elbow points out. Let's put in that brachioradialis. I, I think I just like saying brachioradialis. <laughs> All right. And then the wrist is like somewhere in here. I'm trying to draw this a little darker so you can see how I'm emphasizing those certain parts of the body. And then when we come in here, that's a little tiny piece of the pectoralis major. It's so tiny, you can barely see it, but you can also see that here we start to get the rib cage. And this is the front of the pelvis up here. All right. And then this dips in and now this is your great trochanter. Okay. So that is a bony landmark. Great trochanter. All right. So here, let me draw the great trochanter a little bit bigger and I'll zoom in so you can all see a little bit more. Okay. Let's find that. Great trochanter. Here it is. Okay, so that's my great trochanter. So I'm going to put that here. Let's make this pelvis not look so scary. Again, I know it looks wonky, but we're not here for accuracy. We're here to make connections. So here's my PSIS. And let's make a sacrum as well. Okay, so there's my great trochanter. I love drawing all these little bumps. And then here, I'm going to get more specific about these parts of the femur that stick out a little more. All right, and I think I made this look too much like a butterfly. <laughs> so let's just get that in there. Who's drawing with me, by the way? This is not, this is probably one of the hardest draw along subjects I think I've ever done. So if you're getting a headache watching <laughs> me try to figure this out, that's why it's, it's not an easy exercise. And actually I messed up my PSIS. It looks a little bit too round. So I'm gonna get in there and make it a little bit thinner. Okay, so that's your bony landmark. That's your Great trochanter. All right. And actually, you know what? While we're in the vicinity, <laughs> let's just work on 
this other side of the pelvis. And actually what's nice about Roche, there's a whole bunch of pelvis images back here. So this is the view that we're looking at, which is posterior. I'll move this down so you can all see this better. Now, so in theory, I can't make it this wide because this is a bit straight on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like squish it. Like I'm gonna squish it this way. That's what has to happen for this to work out. So we're gonna squish everything so it goes that way. All right. Oh shoot, I need a view that shows the great trochanter. Okay, I actually, I need this view. Let me put this view in place. This is the view. This over. Let me zoom out and then you can all see a little better. This is what I need. See, if I don't see the great trochanter here, it's too difficult for me to make that addition. All right, now here's my great trochanter. It's like sticking out like this. Okay, but now I gotta go back to the lag. Which I think is back here. Oh, here we go. Okay, there's my lag. Oh, I need the opposite one, sorry. <laughs> this is the one I had to flip it in Photoshop so I could get that accurate image. But I'll tell you, if you want to really know anatomy, this is the way to go. It's tedious, but I, I don't know. I like this stuff. <laughs> like I find this like super fun. Maybe I'm just a total weirdo, but I find this really just fascinating. Because it's like you can study those charts all day, but this is like you're actually putting that knowledge into practice. And I guess it just bothers me a lot of these artists who teach anatomy, they make it like so technical and I just like my head hurts. And so for me, I always have to bring it back to drawing because if I don't have that, it just becomes too much like a medical class. And to me, that is oh, not good. Although I do think it'd be fun to cut up a cadaver. <laughs> okay, so here's my tibia. I'm going to put in my fibula over here. I'm looking more carefully at the way this bone functions at the bottom because I want to get in my ankle bones. Ankle bones are so helpful. Like I'm so surprised a lot of people don't draw them because when you do, it's like all the difference in the world. I mean, that's really the way a lot of these landmarks are. It's like you can get away with not drawing a lot of the figure if you know what are the things that actually make a difference, because there are certain landmarks that just they don't help you. But stuff like the ankle bones, absolutely. That is like all the difference. OK, so I'm actually going to jump over to this side and let's get a tibia that does not look like a rock because it, it has this more dramatic shape starting to get up here and then i'm noting also that the fibula is in front of it from this view it's a lot thinner than i drew it initially okay and then here's my ankle bone Calcaneus, here's a, just a big cluster like that, okay? So you can see though, the consequence now is that I've lost my figure. So now I'm gonna go back to the reference photo and let's see if we can beef up those legs a little bit more so they don't look so funky. All right, so what I'm looking at, I got that great trochanter here. Now here's another thigh muscle coming in and here, that's the bottom of the tibia and that's right on the skin. Okay. So you'll see in this space here, like this is all muscle. 
you can see so much of the thigh is all muscle. Okay, but then see how this comes right up to the edge of the bone. That's how you know that's where the bone shows. And then here too, there's, um, this is the gastrocnemius muscle. And it's pretty significant, like especially back here, it really shows up very clearly. And then it gets very thin because then you have the Achilles tendon that comes down. All right, and then we can put the heel around and then start to block in. Wow, that's a really big foot. <laughs> okay, that was uh, not very proportionally correct, but that's okay. That's not the purpose of this exercise. Well, I love this comment from Maria, who says, speaking as someone who draws cartoony stuff, the more I know anatomy, the better my cartoon characters get. So I kind of have to suck it up and study. Sometimes that is what it is. I mean, I think a lot of people assume that, oh, well, a cartoon is simple. I don't need to know anatomy, but it's so helpful. I mean, the people I know that do character design is absolutely something that they think about. Elias says, so glad to catch you in a live stream. So interesting. I relate to the structure in architecture and go back for the details when I'm creating. Oh, you know something? We're drawing a figure. But honestly, the principles that I would apply to drawing a building, to drawing a landscape, it's all really similar. Like, I, I do think sometimes people think there's like, well, you draw trees like this. If I'm drawing a building, I draw like this. If I'm drawing a person, I draw like this. I, I don't agree with that. I think no matter what I'm drawing, it's all sort of the same thing. It's look at the big shapes, jump around, think gesturally. I mean, none of that changes. It doesn't matter if I'm drawing a unicorn or if I'm drawing, all I can think of is Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> we'll have to get him on. We'll have to do a zygomatic arch stream because he's got the world's sharpest zygomatic arches. I have this problem now because you know how you're like on Instagram and you're like, you know, looking at that in a cover batch during your lunch. And then it's like distracting because then I'll like sit down to do something for art prof on Instagram and it's just showing me Ben in a cover batch. I'm like, please stop. Like, I wish that these algorithms wouldn't do this because it makes it really hard for me to get stuff done. So I wish there was a way you could like, I don't know, maybe I just need to like search incognito or something because it's a problem. I'm like, I'm trying to get something done. Instagram keeps showing me all these pictures. Although what I think is funny is Instagram seems to like showing me pictures of Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm like, okay, does Instagram think Jake Gyllenhaal looks like Michael Fassbender? Or like, I'm trying to figure out like how Instagram figures out which celebrity, because I've never looked up Jake Gyllenhaal before, but he keeps showing up in my Instagram feed. So there must be something in the algorithm that has decided that somehow Jake Gyllenhaal fans are related to Michael Fassbender fans. I don't know. Okay, so let's pull together this foot now so I've gotten all that stuff in there. And this is a very strange angle because you'll see, okay, here's the Achilles tendon. And this is all bone. I mean, once you get down to this section of the foot, there's very, very little to look at in terms of muscle. Okay, and I'm going to put in those flexion folds are like this. They're right in between. Does everyone see that? That's your flexion fold. And then there are other muscles, like there's a muscle that comes up like this. We can see it a little bit. I'm gonna show my gastrocnemius a little bit better. God, how did I mess up? This foot is like ginormous. Oh, I drew it so big. It really should be like half the size that I made it. But again, this is where like, you know, just don't, don't fret about that, that doesn't really matter. 
All right. So that's that lower section. Let's come back up to the scapula because my scapula is feeling a little wonky. It look like pork chops. So let me get a better view of them because the thing about the scapula is that not all of it shows on the surface like this shows. Okay. So if I make that part dark, that's the part of the scapula you're really going to see. You're going to see this part too. And then this part, but then this part here, this is like all muscle, that whole section. So this whole part of the scapula is totally covered. And then here is the top of the humerus. Let me bring my humerus back. I feel like my arm sort of disintegrated as well. Let's see. I mean, the important thing here is that you get in your elbow. As long as you get in your elbow, you're probably fine. All right, so there's my elbow right there. And I want to do a little bit more on this other arm as well. So let's see. Actually, that's not the right view. I need to see the elbow more prominently. So I think it's, I think it's closer to this one. Okay, so let's put that in. And then here's the other section of my humerus. And I lost my deltoid, but let's put it back. It should probably be something like this. And there's my bicep. There's my elbow and brachioradialis I know kind of wraps around like that. All right. So are, are people starting to see some of those connections? I'm curious. Tell me in the chat, because I think what I start saying is saying like, oh, look at this elbow. It's right against the surface of the skin. Look, this is the brachioradialis. But if you look at the brachioradialis, I'll write that down. In between the brachioradialis and the radius and ulna, there's all this muscle. So it's like you start to notice what's showing up and what's not. Like this is the deltoid. It's a very big muscle. Like the top of the humerus, you're not going to feel that. Like if you guys touch this part of your deltoid, you're just going to feel muscle. You're not going to feel the top of the humerus. So that's where I think this gets to be really fun is when you start to really understand the whole bony landmark thing. It's like, wow, it really works. <laughs> it actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Let me do a little bit more on the face. So let me zoom in and then you can all see that a little bit better. Okay. So on the face, I'm not gonna do the hair because that's just gonna get in the way. But I do wanna show, for example, like here's the top of the cheekbone. Maybe I'll put in a bit of the nose. And just to indicate about where the lip might be. And then of course this bit of skin that's sort of twisting around and then, I mean, if you did add the hair, it would be a lot larger, obviously. And I got the ear in there. Okay, let's just solidify the skull though, because I feel like it's a little bit hard to see my psychomatic arch. Here we go. There's my psychomatic arch. Okay, so the psychomatic arch is very thin when it's next to the ear, and then it gets thicker. And then you can see here the eye socket, nasal bone, mandible. Jawbone is pretty dramatic. Okay, and let's try to do a little bit of vertebrae. Okay, it's not going to look great, but 
at the very least, I, I can just say, okay, there's a bunch of things sticking out here. <laughs> They're all protruding. I'm going to do a little bit of red cage. See if I can do some of that. It's like cottage cheese. Oh, well. So what I'm going to try to find is about the rib cage is about there. And what you're looking at is that, okay, well, the ribs, they, they go about in this direction. They are underneath the scapula. Here on the left-hand side, you're barely going to see them at all because they're just like totally underneath everything. I mean, like, don't sweat the ribs. It's fine. <laughs> we know that they're in there, right? It's good. I mean, I think the important thing about the spine is that it looks big because the thing is, once it gets down to the bottom, it's really wide. So you don't have to draw like all the knobs and everything, but you have to show that it gets wider and wider towards the bottom. And if you show that, I think that's the important thing. So we'll see if I can do a better job of that. Show some of that division a little bit more. Oh, geez, I totally lost my Ilya crest, my PSIS. It just gets so complicated down here. Here's the tailbone. Oh, and I lost my, what happened to my femur? What is going on? Ugh. Put that femur back. Let's put that back. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's the front. Okay. No, that's not what I need. <laughs> Do you see why it's nice to have the anatomy book? It's hard to organize all of these slides. I just need to give myself the femur back because it's bothering me that I have no femur here. There because the femur is such a big bone, like you can't not address it. It's very, very important. All right. Okay, that's kind of really fun. I know that was very nerdy, <laughs> but I had a lot of fun doing that. So Ginger Cell says, I see all the connections. It weirds me out, I don't know why. I think because you're starting to look at the figure differently. I think instead of just thinking about what's on the surface and what's literally in front of you, you're starting to go beneath the form. And that's what is different. A lot of people don't think about things this way. They just look at, well, this is what I see. I'm gonna draw that. And I'm saying, you're not gonna see any of this, but now try to draw it. So it's very weird. Janine, I don't know if you want me to go down this rabbit hole of <laughs> Louis Wayne in the Imitation Game. Well, I will tell you, I watched Louis Wayne twice last weekend. Lauren also watched it, and we're going to do a stream on Sunday where we're going to react to both the movie and Louis Wayne's artwork. So you should all check into this then. It is a good film, and I did really like Claire Foy who plays Louis Wayne's wife. She was fantastic. So yeah. <laughs> George says, you need a burner account for your actor searches. Exactly. Well, because every now and then I'm like, I should follow one of those like fan accounts, right? And then I do it. It's like, I can't get off it, you know? So I actually don't follow any of the fan accounts because it's just, I like know that they're there, but I don't follow them because it's just a little bit too easy. <laughs> S says, it's totally making me appreciate the body and its functions, spooky, but fun. Yeah. So here's the thing. This is not about making a beautiful drawing, but I think as long as you start to see those connections and you start saying, hey, 
I can see that there's bone in here and I can see there's a muscle here, but look at how much form is in between. That's what you want to be looking at because people don't understand sometimes like, hey, you're not looking at muscle here. This is a bone. It's right up against the skin. Here it's not. Here you have brachyradialis and then the bone is like embedded inside the arm. So once you start to understand that, in my opinion, it's such a game changer as far as what you can do with your work in anatomy. I hope you will all join me in the Art Prof Discord. I will be in the post live streams channel. I'll show you some images of this drawing up close so you can see it a little bit better. And a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters. We are so excited to have Catherine Chow, Rio B and Vanessa Falchi join us because we are getting close to our Patreon goal. We are not quite there yet and we need to get there. So everybody think about pledging, supporting Art Prof because we wanna keep our content 100% free. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.